In this lecture, we'll be looking at Pontiac's Rebellion, which is a major Native American uprising against the British from 1763 to 1766. The event took place um, in the Great Lakes region, um, parts of Ohio country, and into upstate New York. Pontiac's Rebellion is an outgrowth of earlier conflicts in North America, especially the Seven Years' War. Pictured on this slide is part of a 1763 English translation of the Treaty of Paris, which ended the Seven Years' War. Uh, the Seven Years' War is known to Americans as the French and Indian War. Um, as a result of the war, the French transferred their territorial claims west of the Mississippi River to Spain, then all French territory east of the Mississippi River went to the British. The treaties of Easton and Paris limited European colonization to the eastern seaboard of the Atlantic coast. This map depicts the vast territorial changes that occurred as a result of the Seven Years' War. Areas in red are those that were British territories prior to the war while areas in pink represent French lands acquired by the British in 1763 after the Seven Years' War. The tan-colored regions are French lands that went to Spain. Post-war relations between the British and Native American groups started quite poorly after the war. The British exhibited little cultural awareness of the Native peoples, and they tended to treat Native American groups like conquered foes. Um, this didn't sit well with Native Americans, of course, because they didn't believe they had actually lost a war. It was the French that had lost the war, and, even, and many of these Native groups weren't even allied with the French. In their dealings with Native groups, the British issued unilateral demands without any diplomatic negotiations, which, of course, was different from the previous um, relations that the Native Americans had with the French. British traders engaged in unfair trading practices. Uh, this was due to their essentially monopolistic positions with no other traders around. Most importantly, the British failed to stop new white settlers from moving onto Indian lands. Understanding the difficult situation, the British in 1763 raised troop levels in North America to 10,000 soldiers. Pictured here is British General Geoffrey Amherst, the military leader in charge of post-war British territories in North America. Gift-giving had long been an important part of trading and political relationships between the French and various Native American groups. However, Amherst considered this uh, bribery or extortion, and he refused to recognize the importance of this tradition to Native Americans. Um, Amherst was also under great pressure at the time to cut British expenses after the war, and he saw uh, gift-giving as uh, a no-brainer or a place where he could cut quickly and save money. However, Native American groups regarded this change in policy as an insult, and it did not sit well with them at all. The Delaware prophet Neolin played an important role in the conflict that would become known as Pontiac's Rebellion. The image on this slide is a 20th century sculpture of Neolin by artist Phil Cote. In 1761, Neolin claimed to have received visions that told him to preach a new way for Native Americans. Um, in his vision, he learned that Indians were to give up alcohol and to give up polygamy. They were to reject modern technology and return to traditional values. Native groups, according to Neil Lynn, should drive out the Europeans. Uh, eventually, Neil Lynn proclaimed, God's favor would be bestowed on those who returned to the traditional ways. While some ethno-historians and anthropologists have noted a number of similarities to Christian philosophies in Neolin's message. The end result, regardless of whether this was a uh, indigenous religion slightly influenced by Christianity or not, um, was that this philosophy reached a very wide audience among Native Americans in the early 1760s. The years of 1762 and 63, particularly that winter, were especially difficult for Native Americans in the Ohio country and the Great Lakes region. There were significant crop failures and famine, and several major epidemics struck Native American groups in the region. The British refused to provide aid to Native American groups, which angered Indians who believed British assurances earlier that they were equal since they had been allied in war. The image on this slide is of Ottawa Chief Pontiac. 
as depicted in a 19th century painting by John Mix Stanley. Pontiac's Rebellion is sometimes called Pontiac's War, Pontiac's Conspiracy, Pontiac's uh, Revolt. This was a major um, conflict, a revolt against the British, in part led by Pontiac, who was a Native American leader uniting uh, various tribes with the principal goal of expelling the British from North America. However, some historians dislike the attachment of the rebellion to this single figure of Pontiac, as there were many leaders, and at best this was a, a loose confederation of uh, Native American groups. Um, there were significant massacres and atrocities on both sides during this conflict. Pays de Nord is a French term meaning upper country. It refers to the upper regions of the Great Lakes and upper uh, St. Lawrence um, River Basin. Uh, so we're looking at uh, Michigan, Ontario, Ohio, Illinois as the, the Pays de Nord. Um, it was Native American groups in the Pays de Nord who were most involved in Pontiac's Rebellion. In the Great Lakes region, the Ottawa, the Ojibwe, the Potawatomi, and the Huron were principally involved, although there were a few individual tribes who did not participate. In uh, eastern Illinois country, uh, the Miami, the Kickapoo, the Piankasha, the Maskutin, and the Wea participated. In the Ohio country, um, a significant number of groups such as the Delaware, the Shawnee, the Wyandotte, and the Mingo participated. Um, the only major group not participating um, were those closely allied with the Iroquois Confederacy in upstate New York. This slide shows the locations and the dates of the major raids by Native American groups against British installations during Pontiac's Rebellion. After some early 1763 victories in taking such installations as Fort Sandusky, uh, Fort Miami, and Fort Presque Isle, uh, Native groups failed to take Fort Pitt and Fort Detroit after very long sieges. These were two of the most strategically important points. Hundreds of British soldiers were killed in the attacks, with thousands of white settlers killed or forced to flee their homes in the Ohio country and the surrounding regions. At least 200 uh, Indian warriors were killed. That number may be higher. Uh, countless more Native Americans died from smallpox at the time. Um, there's a, a suggestion that this may have been an early example of biological warfare that occurred at Fort Pitt. Um, some documentary sources... Um, indicate that General Jeffrey Amherst may, may have ordered the delivery of blankets to Native Americans that had been contaminated with smallpox. There's some uh, historical debate over um, whether this can be accepted as true or not, but it is, it is clear from the evidence that uh, um, he suggested this at least at one point and may have been an example of uh, a deliberate attempt to infect Native Americans with smallpox at Fort Pitt. Pontiac's Rebellion forced the English Crown to mandate an end to the encroachments on Indian territory. No white settlers were allowed to be west of the so-called Proclamation Line, according to the Royal Proclamation of 1763 by King George III. The Royal Proclamation of 1763 attempted to create a buffer zone by outlawing settlements west of the Appalachians. The act was intended to prevent new settlements from developing in the Ohio Valley and to remove any European colonists already there. Unfortunately, though, the proclamation was uh, virtually unenforceable and settlers continued to migrate westward. This map shows the proclamation line uh, on the uh, right-hand side that was designed to block further white settlement on lands reserved to Native Americans. The map also contains uh, uh, detailed analyses of the areas controlled by the British, French, Spanish, and the Russian empires prior to the Seven Years' War. In the past, Pontiac's Rebellion has been depicted as a setback for Native Americans. Modern historians, though, typically view the war as a stalemate, at least in, in military terms. Native Americans were unsuccessful in their efforts to remove the British, and probably unrealistic as well. Um, even to push them beyond the Appalachians would have been probably beyond their capability. 
Um, at the same time, though, the British could not triumph over the Native Americans. They could not conquer them simply enough. There just were too many and too few soldiers. Uh, Native Americans ended up winning something of a victory by forcing the British government to change their policies, though, as we will see, um, this was a, a short-term gain at best. This brings to a close our brief look at Pontiac's Rebellion.